We now have the results of three mayoral races in southeastern Massachusetts. Now in Fall River, incumbent Paul Coogan, as you can see, defeating mayor and former mayor and Bristol County District Attorney Sam Sutter, getting over 61% of the vote. Over in New Bedford, incumbent John Mitchell defeated Tyson Moultrie after receiving 66% of the vote. And over in Taunton, right now it's too close to call with 89% of the precincts reporting incumbent Sean O'Connell is ahead of Ed Carrera with 59% of the vote. And for more election team coverage, Matt Paddock is in Fall River tonight. Matt's live at Mayor Coogan's watch party at Our Lady of Light Club. Hey, Matt. Hey Shannon, hey Mike. Well, the announcement coming just before 9 o'clock tonight that incumbent Mayor Paul Coogan had won his re-election bid. The banquet hall here in Fall River erupting with cheers and applause and a standing ovation. When we asked Coogan what his main focus for this year's campaign and election would be, he said it was infrastructure, public safety, and his constituents. And when I asked him what the key to his success throughout this election was, he gave all of the credit to the hard work of his team. It is a big win. It's, uh, as I said, you know, you start off at 7 in the morning and it's now whatever it is, 9 o'clock at night and it's a long day for me. Um, but it is a big win. We, we earned this win. We went out, we worked, we did what we had to do. We did the fundraisers, we did the sign holdings, we went door to door. So we won the thing and that's what it takes. You've got to be able to work. And there were two other mayoral races in southeastern Massachusetts. Those were New Bedford and Taunton, where both incumbent John Mitchell and Sean O'Connell won their re-election bid. Hey, a lot of progress over the years in public safety and our schools and economic development, but there's a lot of work ahead. And uh, I get up every morning and, and get after it for the benefit of our residents. We have, um, you know, a record that seems to be, you know, a recipe for success in improving our finances, improving our infrastructure, strengthening public safety, and improving our economic development. Um, so we look forward to continuing all of those things for the people of Taunton as I work full time, 100% of the time to be their full time mayor. And coming up tonight, new at 1030, we hear from Mayor Paul Coogan about the political battle between him and Sam Sutter. But reporting live in Fall River, Matt Paddock, 12 News. Thank you, Matt. Now, voters in eight Rhode Island towns went to the polls today to vote on more than $1 billion in spending. Right now, all the school-related bonds have passed, except for the so-called mega bond over in North Kingstown, where voters vetoed a $222 million bond to consolidate two middle schools, build a brand new facility, and then build a new public safety complex. And joining us now is 12 News political analyst Joe Fleming. Joe, this one drew a, a lot of voters. It, first right. of all, I think in the early shows we were saying that this had the biggest turnout Correct. of any race, um, but a lot of opposition and a lot of uh, support. Correct. You said a big turnout generally signifies People that are angry. They want to come out and vote something down. We saw that with the early voting in North Kingstown. That was one of the top ones in the state. I think the campaigns there was that people felt it was too much money. It was going to t raise their taxes a great deal. That was one of the messages the opponents were trying to get out, a high tax increase. And I also think when you add on things to a school bond like a public safety complex, People start to get weary. They're just trying to shove things on you. So I think that hurt the bond also. But it lost convincingly in the two precincts in North Kingstown. Because this was a combo question. You couldn't right. just vote for the middle school. Right. It was the middle school and the public safety complex combined, plus another <laughs> question about a rec center. Right, and that went down also. In Rhode Island, Rhode Islanders tend to support school bonds. But when they get too big, and also with the very high interest rates, people start to think, think about it. Is it worth doing it at this point? And obviously the voters in North Kingston do not feel they want to go forward. All right, Joe, we're going to move on to Barrington, where voters have approved a $250 million bond for school upgrades, 64% to 36%. And the town of Bristol has overwhelmingly approved borrowing $200 million so the district can replace Mount Hope High School and renovate other school buildings. Similar results in Warren, the two towns share a school district. This was a unique situation where in order to pass, the measure needed to win support from a majority of voters between both communities. And heading up north to Cumberland, where a $52 million bond to rebuild uh, BF Norton Elementary School has been approved by voters there as well. And East Greenwich, the town proposed borrowing up to $150 million to renovate, rebuild, or build from the ground up six school buildings. That measure passed easily with 71% of voters supporting it. And over in Lincoln, voters overwhelmingly approved a $25 million bond to make upgrades at all four of the town's elementary schools. 
And for the bond question in Middletown, it was a close one here. 52% of voters support spending up to $190 million to build a combination middle and high school, as well as make repairs and improvements to other schools in town. But 48% were against it. And voters living in Rhode Island Senate District 1 in Providence have chosen a new state senator. Democrat Jake Basalian defeated Republican Nyoka Powell with 83% of the vote. Basalian will be filling the seat left vacant following the death of Majority Whip Mary Ellen Goodwin in April. Please stay with 12 News for all of your election coverage. Right now on our website, we have up-to-the-minute vote tallies, a bond tracker with a breakdown of all of the various ballot question results, and more. It's all on WPRI.com.